In July 1776, Pennsylvania soldiers took up the defense of this hill, one half mile to the west of Fort Ticonderoga. This hill was already historic ground. French soldiers successfully defended this hilltop behind their log walls known as the French Lines on July 8, 1758. Colonel Anthony Wayne, commander of the 4th Pennsylvania Battalion, noted that his soldiers discovered the bones of British soldiers killed in that battle, as the soldiers dug new earthen fortifications to stop yet another British attack. As American soldiers dug in on tactically important locations all around Fort Ticonderoga, each position got a new name befitting their patriotic cause, Mount Independence, Mount Hope, and Mount Defiance. The heights of Carry On here were renamed as Liberty Hill. The 1st, 2nd, and 4th Pennsylvania Battalions were eventually joined by the 6th Pennsylvania Battalion and the 6th Continental Regiment of Massachusetts, forming one of the strongest brigades in the whole Northern Continental Army here at Ticonderoga. Among these units today, we know the most about the 4th Pennsylvania Battalion from documents like their letters, diaries, and a regimental orderly book. Many aspects of their experience was true for other units in their brigade. After companies retreating with the Northern Army out of Canada were joined by those recruiting in Bucks County, Pennsylvania, the whole 4th Pennsylvania Battalion encamped on Liberty Hill by July 15, 1776. Soldiers here at Ticonderoga faced an appallingly rainy summer here at Ticonderoga as their linen canvas tents flooded on several occasions. Typically, soldiers in the Northern Army moved boards along with them to make a dry floor. Some, like Captain John Lacey, used extra boards to raise up his tent, and soldiers even built small fireplaces out of blocks of sod at the back of their tents to dry off. All the while, they worked on constructing earthen walls and cannon batteries to defend their positions. With the majority of their earthworks complete, Colonel Wayne gave orders for his soldiers to begin lodging as the nature of the campaign will permit on September 14, 1776. Soldiers of the 4th Pennsylvania Battalion were lucky as they began construction of small houses called huts. They and the entire army here used pine boards cut at the water-powered sawmill on the Lachute River. The French completed the first sawmill here in September of 1756, and the British rebuilt the mill in 1759. By 1776, soldiers with teams of oxen had to go a mile west of these falls to get pine logs to be sawn into boards. Through the entire great camp of Ticonderoga, demand for pine boards for construction reached tens of thousands of board feet by the end of 1776, drawing lumber from mills at Skeensboro, modern day Whitehall, and Crown Point in addition to this mill here. Maps of this sawmill show it to the south side of the lowest falls on the Lachute River, right here. Though it produced some larger timber, including three-inch oak boards for cannon platforms, this water-powered mill mostly made one-inch thick pine boards. These one-inch pine boards covered the whole exterior and roofed the Pennsylvanian hu Pennsylvanians' huts. Inside these huts had a simple frame of hand-hewn beams like simple farm structures that most soldiers were familiar with. Nearly all of these huts were set down into the ground about 18 inches. This helped insulate the huts and supplied the sod and soil to create a chimney at the back of each hut. While the army as a whole stocked nails by the barrel full, much of the planking may have been pegged in place. Soldiers leaving Ticonderoga at the end of 1776 were specifically ordered to leave behind the boards from their huts. 10 to 12 soldiers, the equivalent to two full tents or two full messes of soldiers occupied each hut. They kept a small fire burning in the back for heat. Cooking beyond warming broth for the sick was prohibited inside these huts. That was done 
by each mess's cook of the day at camp kitchens at the end of each row of huts. Once dinner was ready, each mess crowded together to eat their stew, cooked from coarse flour, salted beef, and whatever vegetables they could purchase from the civilian market set up weekly by the fort. Soldiers sleeping inside these huts lay on beds of hay or pine boughs. They lined up like cordwood to either side of the hut, and as temperatures dropped, they shared each other's blankets that they had received as a bounty for joining the Continental Army, sharing each other's warmth to survive. Each morning they dressed, washed their hands and their faces, and turned out for the morning roll call taken by their sergeants. From there, they took up their posts, whether fatigue duty, drilling together, or keeping watch as guards or pickets. Each day, they waited for news of an impending British attack. Before the drums finally sounded the alarm on October 28, 1776, and they had the chance to face down the British. Today, Fort Ticonderoga has the most intact remains of American Revolutionary War fortifications, including those of Liberty Hill. Inside these earthen walls are shallow pits like this, all that remains of those soldiers' huts from 1776. Rows of these shallow pits corroborate images of Liberty Hill showing row upon row of huts, enough to house this entire brigade. It was along these rows of huts a peculiar riot happened on December 25th, 1776. Having stopped the British together on October 28th, Pennsylvania and New England soldiers let their differences and distrust get the best of them. Safely within the entrenchments of Liberty Hill, Pennsylvanians fired in anger against the Yankees, or New England soldiers, living in huts alongside them. The National Endowment for the Humanities, bringing you the stories that define us.